Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States found itself drawn into World War II. As the opening stages of the war progressed, the need arose to document the war experience for the American home front. At the age of 38, artist Peter Hurd received a telegram from Life magazine offering him a commission to paint and sketch the war from a first-hand point of view. His assignments for Life magazine would transport him from the pastoral setting of his New Mexico ranch to the harsh reality of war. Hurd's wartime sketches embody the spirit and emotion of World War II, from the air campaigns over Europe to the remote islands of the South Pacific. Hurd documented the war with an artist's perspective. Born Harold Hurd Jr. in Roswell, New Mexico on February 22, 1904. He was soon given the nickname Pete by his parents. Having served during the Spanish-American War and the Mexican Revolution, his father instilled in him a sense of military duty. At the age of 17, Peter Hurd entered West Point. During his first year, he purchased a set of oil colors and began decorating the envelopes of the letters that he sent home. Hurd began to realize that painting was an exciting and infinite world. Hurd left West Point and later enrolled at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. For the next six years, he served as an apprentice under the renowned artist N.C. Wyeth. In 1929, Hurd married N.C. Wyeth's daughter, Henrietta, and they honeymooned in Hurd's beloved New Mexico. Five years later, they purchased a ranch in San Patricio, New Mexico, where they eventually settled. Through the 1930s, Hurd gained recognition from the murals he painted in post offices in Texas and New Mexico. Soon after the start of World War II, Hurd was hired to document the war from an artist's perspective. For his first commission, he spent four months with the 8th Air Force at Remington Aerodrome in England. In addition to documenting daily life, Hurd flew numerous missions with the airmen. He shared the emotions of their tragedies and triumphs. Life magazine devoted 17 pages to Hurd's paintings in four different issues in 1943. From portraits of airmen to the point of view of a B-17 waste gunner, Hurd captured the stark realities of war with an intimate knowledge. In January of 1944, Hurd embarked on his second commission for Life magazine. Over the next six months, he would travel over 60,000 miles with the Air Transport Command, touching down in 21 countries on five continents. In stark contrast to the tension of his first assignment in England, Hurd was able to travel freely and document the war as it spread throughout the Southern Hemisphere. Among his many subjects, he sketched native islanders in the Pacific, airfields in Africa, and the U.S. landing strip on Ascension Island in the South Atlantic. Life magazine published 23 of Hurd's sketches on June 19, 1944. After the war, Hurd resumed the daily routine of sketching and painting life on his ranch. He would travel on horseback, occasionally stopping to paint or sketch a scene that interested him. In 1952, Hurd embarked on an epic project to create a fresco painting inside the rotunda of the administration building at Texas Technological College in Lubbock. The project, which took two years to complete, documents the history of settlement in the Lubbock area. In 1966, Hurd was commissioned to paint the official portrait of President Lyndon Johnson, which now hangs in the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. Hurd had plenty of work for his entire life following World War II. 
His work appears in more than 40 of the finest museums in the country. When Hurd died on July 9, 1984, he left an invaluable volume of work. I have no possible knowledge, nor does anyone else for sure, how he'll be regarded after his death. But regardless of that, I do feel that one thing they'll probably say, well, that's the way it used to be. I may not be regarded as a great artist or one of any real concern, but I do feel that I record things that perhaps even the camera doesn't go after, which will remind people of the past as, um, well, someone who lived in this period, as simply as that. Mm -hmm.